Um, well, I got in by pure and utter accident. It was it was a sequence of events that happened, which which I, you know I, it was pure and utter fate. In that I was running this small company, importing and exporting baked beans to the Middle East. Sounds bizarre, but that's what the company was scraping a living. I'm very you know I had to eat more of the stock than I actually kept. And this company was called Taurus. And then there was a phone call. Um, after this company had been up and running for about six months, there was a phone call from this company called Commodore, and they made the machine called the Amiga. And they said, oh, we've heard about your company, and we'd really love you to um, kind of develop some stuff for us. And uh, I was intrigued by this, and so I went up to see them, and they were talking about this product that they were making, and they, they were making this thing called the Amiga, and it sounded fantastic. And they allowed me to have five new Amigas. And so these Amigas arrived. I didn't know what to do with them. So I always had, the, always had a passion for games. And so I um, started fiddling around on it. And from that came my first game, which was called Populous. You, you know, Populous, in a way, was like a great piece of modern art where an artist has accidentally thrown a pot of paint against the canvas and, oh, my God, that's a brilliant piece of work. It started very simply. It started with this, just this green landscape. And then I was playing around and thinking, God, what could you do on this green landscape? And I thought, well, I put little people on the green landscape. Oh, that looks very nice. And these people, little people used to move around. But then when they used to hit the, the coastline, they, they would just walk across the water and that would look stupid and ridiculous. And I just wasn't a good enough programmer to work out how to make them kind of navigate around this little maze of, of coastline. So I thought, you know, I can't program this. I'm not, not smart enough. I know what I'll do is I'll just get the player to raise the land for these little people. They'll just stand by the coast, and if they, the player wants the little person to move out onto the water, they have to raise the land. And that was how it, the whole mechanic was born. It was really born out of my total incompetence as a programmer, rather than born out of any... There was no design documents, there was no art style. It was just, it was just, ah, let's try this out. Oh, that works. Let's try this out. That works. Let's try this out. This, that doesn't work. Well, Dungeon Keeper started with me watching a James Bond movie called You Only Live Twice. Uh, and in that, James Bond completely unfairly found the evil, I think his name was Scaramanga or someone, I can't remember the name of the baddie, in this hollowed out volcano, went in there, and at the touch of one button, it seemed to me, destroyed the whole of the space. That's completely unfair. I wanted to know his story, not James Bond's story. He just flew in there, pressed the button, and flew out with a, with a pretty girl. And that gave me, I remember thinking about that after seeing that movie and thinking, God, I would love to have a story or a game about being a bad guy. And then I, re I think I realized at the end of the development of, of Dungeon Keeper, what if we made a game where choice was at the center of the game, where you could get to the end successfully by being ultimately evil or wonderfully good? That would be really unique. That wouldn't be like playing the role of some precant hero. It would be you, a reflection of you. And how fascinating would it be to get to the end of a game and say, gosh, I really didn't realize I'd be that sort of person. So royalty walks into our home, a princess snoreless. We started on Fable and we start we started talking about why don't we do a role-playing game. I mean, I love role-playing games. I love the idea of being a character in a world. But imagine playing in a world where people notice the things that you did. How would it make you feel as a player? Uh, but the fascinating, slightly disappointing thing is that the vast majority of people will play good. So then the next challenge is, if everyone is going to play good, how can you really push them and test them in that? And so with um, the last game I did, Fable 3, the first choice that you get is a really tough choice. It's not a good evil choice, it's just a choice. Do you save your girlfriend or do you save these group of strangers? And that's what I found that, people found that a very interesting choice. To finish a game, there's two emotions that go on in my mind, and, and a lot of people's minds, I think. One is relief. 
you know, you've driven yourself very hard, you've, you've gone through the grief process of losing a lot of the features that you've had in, in a game, and you, you know, you, you think, right, now it's time for this game to, to get out there. So there's that, that sense of relief. The other is a sense of slight shame, because I don't think any game really has ever really come up to the ideal that was first in my mind when I first thought of the uh, of the idea. It's always a mixture of pride and regret and fear and unbelievable joy.